All right, listen up, Louisville. Some uh, important information here uh, for the elections that are coming up, probably for Kentucky, but specifically Louisville. Louisville, you're going to have to stand up soon. you got four days for some of these deadlines, and some of these deadlines is a couple months from now, but it's a deadline. And so if you want to have any impact on this election coming up, if you want to run, uh, you're going to have to get on it. So uh, the last day to register to vote is on October 9th, so it's August 11th right now, August, September, October 9th, so less than two months. you got less than two months to register to vote if you have not registered to vote. Um, the last day to register to run for office is on Tuesday, October 9th, also at 4 p.m. So the last day to re register to run for office is on Tuesday, October 9th at 4 p.m., and the last day to register to vote is August 9th. Uh, so let's see, the candidates for the local offices can file at the election center, the Jefferson County Election Center at 810 Barrett Avenue in the Urban County Government Center's room 103. Candidates for federal, state, and judicial offices file at the Secretary of State in Frankfurt. So it's the Jefferson County Election Center, 810 Barrett Avenue, the Urban County Government Center, room 103. Uh, that's where you would register to vote. The filing deadline for offices in the suburban cities in Jefferson County and for Jefferson County Board of Education seats, nonpartisan races. So the uh, JC, uh, JSP, Jefferson County Public Schools, JCPS, the JCPS Schools uh, Board of Education seats. Uh, the deadline is in four days, October or August 14th at 4 p.m. So August 14th and four days from now at 4 p.m. You can't register. If you want to run for the Board of Elections and um, and you don't do it in four days, well, sorry about your luck. You should have done it because that's the, that's the fucking deadline, 4 p.m. There's usually signature requirements and some other things, so you need to get on it. You need on Monday to talk to them and say, hey, what's up? What's about this Board of Education race? How come you all screwing up all the... Um, Educational standards, how come uh, you're reversing Plessy versus Ferguson, how come there's all this bullying going on? Come on, JCPS, you're going to have all these bullies in there? Why? Because you guys are bullies too, so you can't actually see the bullies? Why don't you teach the kids to stand up for themselves, then you wouldn't have to worry about it. If you actually talk to the kids like you give a damn about them, but I guess you wouldn't teach them to stand up for themselves. You'd probably suspend them, wouldn't you? They'd stand up for themselves, you suspend them? That's stupid. You ain't teaching them any good lessons about life. You're telling them that if they just accept punches and violence on them, then they'll, that'll be okay, that the administrators will take care of them? I guess that's not really true. JCPS had a girl who got jumped by six boys, stole her cell phone. She told them about the principal. Didn't give a damn. I'm going to say Latimer, Latimer Elementary or Middle School, maybe. Uh, so JCPS has a, a girl who's getting bullied and beat up and jumped by six boys. They told the principal, principal didn't do jack shit, and she got sexually assaulted by the same boys later on. That's JCPS. So, we need to fix these things, so we need more candidates. We need more people out there, more people actually who gives a damn about their community and has any civic knowledge. Um, when you run for office, you got a bullhorn, you know, a bullhorn to speak loudly and uh, get your ideas about policy far and wide. So, you uh, uh, being a candidate does give you power. Uh, gives you... Um, uh, your voice becomes more important than just a common citizen since you could, especially if you're a credible candidate, right? Because that's the, the test, that's the threshold you got to uh, uh, pass. So if you're a Republican or Democrat, then that's okay. But if you're an independent, then um, the media won't treat you like you're a, 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 a credible candidate. And the public will fall in line because they don't question anything that the media tells them. Um, Independent candidates must have filed a statement of candidacy for the general election by April 1st, and now they must file a nominating petition for the general election by 4 p.m. on August 14th. So if you're an independent and you filed for uh, – so you had to put the statement of candidacy in already, now you got to have a nominating petition. Now, this is an important one for all the offices, so not just the Board of Education, but the deadline to file as a write-in candidate for the general election is October 26th which is a little bit more than two months from now, October 26th. So October 26th is the deadline, filing deadline to run for a write-in candidate, October 26th, October, November. So October 26th, which is a little bit more than a week away from the election, you're allowed to run as a write-in candidate. Um, so, so that's important because the uh, uh, Du Bois electoral strategy, the independent third-party electoral strategy, is the strategy that 
uh, Kentucky's progressives should be using really any independence that doesn't think in the two-party dictatorship line. If you don't think in terms of Republican and Democrat, if you're an independent, if you think bigger than the, just the two parties, then you should vote for somebody else that's not part of those two parties. Uh, independents have a higher threshold to get on the ballot. They fight ballot access laws, and a lot of the best ideas come from third parties. Anti-slavery party, the women's suffrage party. Uh, where would we be without those ideas? So uh, it's important to, you know, uh, allow third parties and independents to enter the race because they offer a, a wide variety, a wide spectrum of ideas. And in the great pool of ideas, the best ideas should win. So in the great pool and the great big vast atmosphere uh, of the ideas that's out there, the best ideas, the ones that are, it doesn't matter who says it, it doesn't matter if your buddy or if your friend or some nepotism bullshit's going down, it doesn't matter who you know, it should just be if it's a good idea, it should go. If it's a good idea, do it. If it's not a good idea, then vote against it. But that's the way uh, elections should work. This article, uh, Kerr Journal, July 15th. 2012 by James R. Carroll. He's talking about how we're just going to be spectators to the presidential election as Kentuckians, which is true. Um, if you want to know where the battleground states are, check out MSNBC's weekly look at the 10 hottest advertising markets for the campaigns. This past week were Colorado Springs in Colorado, Grand Junction, Colorado, Tampa, Florida, Denver, Colorado, Orlando, Florida, Richmond, Petersburg, Virginia, Roanoke, Lynchburg, Virginia, Greenville, New Bern, North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina, and Cleveland, Ohio. So North Carolina, Ohio, Florida, Virginia, Colorado. These are the important swing states uh, that are happening right now. Kentucky is not amongst them. The USA Today Gallup poll focuses on a dozen states where the presidential contest will be determined. Colorado, Florida, Iowa, Michigan, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Mexico, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and Wisconsin. So that's Colorado, Florida, Iowa, Michigan, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Mexico, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and Wisconsin. So those are the 12 states that matter. The rest of the states, Kentucky and the 37 other states, are irrelevant. They don't matter. Kentucky, you don't matter this election. You were talking about Obama and Romney? Fuck you. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Neither one of them. Romney's won the state. Romney, Mitt Romney wins Kentucky. I'll go ahead and announce it before Mitt, Ro, Mitt John McCain was the first one announced in the presidential election. I'll go ahead and announce Romney. Romney takes Kentucky. November 6th, Romney wins Kentucky. Nobody needs to vote. Nobody needs to worry about that. If that's the reason you go to the poll, you're wasting your damn vote. Unless you vote for a third-party candidate. Unless you vote for an independent. Unless you vote uh, a protest vote against the two-party establishment. So, uh, seven swing states. Kentucky's not one of them. Um, so, you know, that's important to understand because uh, uh, since we're a safe state, since Mitt Romney is safely going to win this state, by voting for an independent, we are showing that we're dissatisfied with the establishment and that they need to adopt the independent candidate's platform ideas, uh, which is a, uh, what a third party considers a success. If any of the planks of their platform are adopted by the major candidates, then that's a success. So uh, I know uh, Ralph Nader was wanting single-payer health care, and if Obama would have uh, got the public option, then single-payer health care would have actually been enacted, but he didn't. So that was one example of Nader being to the left of Obama and Obama not picking up the issue. They want to say Nader was responsible for Gore's election. No, Gore was responsible for losing Gore's election. Nader had 10 progressive issues that Gore could have picked up, and he would have won a lot more voters. But Gore was trying to be like a Republican light. He wasn't actually trying to be a, a progressive. He wasn't trying to be a truth teller. He was trying to act like the Republicans, only a little bit less than them, which is unfortunate. I found some um, writings I had on Facebook on November 28, 2008. So actually this is before the November 3rd one, but this one's a good one. So this is after the uh, uh, presidential election 2008. This is after uh, Obama won the election. I put RIP George W. Bush. Now that the monster will have no more power, I feel relieved, yet at the same time I'm nervous. Now that all my rallying against the government actually did something productive, I can do better. But I will miss George W. Bush. George W. Bush was... My Richard Nixon, Hunter S. Thompson was sad when Richard Nixon stepped down. I'm sad that George W. Bush stepped down. 
He was a great target. He made jokes. He didn't mind acting like a buffoon or blundering his words. His policies have been incredibly destructive. The world's financial system uh, uh, is collapsing. America's reputation has been completely shot to hell. He fucked this country up really bad. So good fucking riddance. But he's only human, and he was chosen by the people, almost a majority of them. Uh, either way, 48 million Americans are, or wish they were, some asshole redneck oil tycoon who walks with a swagger. And now the majority of the American people want to be Barack Obama's. And watch out for Obama. He didn't vote on many bills in the Senate. He was ran as a blank slate, so you got to put on your own dreams on Obama. And we hope that he's going to be a progressive, but since his talk wasn't progressive enough, he won't be held accountable to socialism or privacy rights. So that's not a surprise. That's not, he's not a socialist. He's not increasing social spending. He's cutting taxes. He extended the Bush tax cuts. And privacy rights, he extended the NDAA. So he's extending the Patriot Act, and he's extending all the war powers that Bush had consolidated. Bush consolidated a shitload of power, and then Obama got in there, and now Obama's got that shitload of power. And when you're in war and you're a war president, that enables you to have a carte blanche and do as the fuck as you please, whatever the fuck you want to do. Nixon says if you're the president, it's not illegal if you do it. So anything you do is allowed if you're the president. So the same destructive power that Bush used to fuck over this country is now being handed to Barack Obama. And Barack Obama has voted to keep his power over his convic uh, convictions again and again. He voted uh, against public financing. So he wants to take those private, private donate donations and so he can get a ton of money. He voted against the FISA amendments. Um, to the Patriot Act, which uh, um, is the uh, warrant that they have to get in order to get a, uh, a wireless uh, tap on your phone or the emails. So the FISA courts are corrupted. Uh, the funding for the Iraq war he kept voting for. He wouldn't say single payer or Canadian style, though he claims to be for universal health care. He wasn't going to pull out all the troops. He's going to leave the combat troops there. Um, so I don't expect much, and that's why the fight still lives on. In fact, right after the election is when the fight starts. Obama said he'd give me $4,000 for college, and I'm glad that he did that. He did help with the Pell Grant. Uh, I'd like the Patriot Act and the Iraq War to be undone, as well as the war on drugs. I want our freedoms and civil liberties back, more freedom of speech and less restrictions, and start passing out some money. What's the point of government if government isn't doing stuff for the people? The government should be providing for the people services, essential services that we need. And if they're not providing the essential services and the safety and the peace that we need, Section 4 of Kentucky's Constitution says we have a right to abolish it and overthrow it. So if the government isn't giving us what we need, we need to undo this government, start a new one. Um, that's one, one solution. So more freedom of speech, less restrictions, pass out more money. If the, uh, I'm a social anarchist, so if the government isn't providing services for the people, why do we have a government? What's the point of it? If you're not giving us stuff, then what are you doing? You're not giving us education and health care. You're just spending money for all these wars to go create as many terrorists as you can get. That's what we're doing. We're funding Israel's military aggression. That's what we're doing. That's fucked up. We need money here in our homeland. We need money here in our domestic land, not in an international overseas bullshit. Starting wars. We need more money for life and less money for death. If Wall Street can take $2,500 of our money, $2,500 because the stimulus bill is 800 or the bank bailout was $800 billion, which is about $2,500 per person. If Wall Street, if we were giving us $2,500, we would have put it back into the economy and the economy had been stimulated. Instead, Wall Street got that money. So if they're able to get $2,500 per person, why can't America get $2,500? Um, you know, it would be nice to have a $1,000 economic stimulus check. And then some. I mean, uh, at least enough for college, you know. that's That would have been a good Christmas gift for me back then. Uh, but an economic stimulus check, you know, if you would have given the money directly to the people, that money would have been reintroduced back out to the public. And since it was reintroduced out to the public and been spent, that would have increased the... Um, that would have increased the, the the economy. The economy would have been better. Right before the election day, I don't know who wrote this. It's not me, but it's a good one. It says, progressives, all those opposed to the war, now is the time to strike. Now is the time to act. Obama and the Democrats have won this election in a landslide. We must show the maximum possible political strength by the number of Nader, McKinney, Barr, and Baldwin votes possible. So, Romney's already won Kentucky. That's Bygone, we don't need even to discuss that. And I might have to wait for the next thing to get this on. Okay, so more with the electoral strategy coming on, but I'm going to read a little bit about this and then carry on. But the uh, 
To all those who oppose the war, to all those who really call themselves progressives, now is the time to act. We can see the course of this election. Obama and the Dems are going to win in the landslide. So we can see what's going to happen in Kentucky. Mitt Romney is going to win Kentucky. We see that. We know that. Mitt Romney is definitely going to win. That's the big course of things, and it's set, and it's already in motion. Get used to Kentucky. Mitt Romney will win the state of Kentucky, and all eight electoral votes will go into his pocket. Um, more about the Du Bois election strategy coming up. Viva la Revolucion, Louisville.